Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today, I wanted to try out a really strong restricted combination in Calyrex and Zacian, as well as some fun sets like Wakam Berry Blastoise with Helping Hand and Yawn, as well as Safety Goggles Zapdos. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps linked in the description below. And more specifically, if you want to check out the battle that the title and thumbnail are referring to, that's going to be game three for today. So that's also in the timestamps in the description below. And thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Today we're using, like I mentioned, a really strong team featuring Calyrex Shadow Rider and Zacian. This was built and piloted by a player called Fiona, aka Yoshi and Lugia, and she finished in the top four of a online grassroots event, Hatterene Series Tournament number four, this past weekend. And yeah, I think it's just overall a really strong team and has a bunch of fun sets as well. Uh, Calyrex and Zacian, just really one of the fastest duos that you can have in the format, and they're both just super, super powerful. What's interesting about this combination is that, you know, you obviously can't max Zacian, and Calyrex is often better off not max because of Astro Barrage being a spread type attack. And so as a result, you're actually often more likely going to want to max Blastoise or Zapdos with this team, but Rillaboom, Calyrex, and Sin are all potential max options as well. The Calyrex here is kind of the standard set that you see these days with Will-O-Wisp and Focus Sash. Uh, this allows you to survive for a little bit longer, and, you know, even two Astro Barrages uh, can really go a really long way. You've got Blastoise on this team as well, and Blastoise is actually really nice with Calyrex because I think Blastoise in itself often isn't picking up one-hit KOs, but it's slowly chipping away at your opponent's Pokemon, especially thanks to Cannonade's residual damage, and that allows you to finish things off with Calyrex in the late game. I think, you know, with a team like this, I would prefer to lead Calyrex if they have a lot of physical attackers that I can burn early on, like opposing Zacians or Groudon, but otherwise I like to actually conserve it for the back and try to sweep games with Calyrex and Zacian in the end game. So Blastoise and Zapdos is a really effective combination here. And what I really like about the Blastoise is like, you know, you've got Hydro Cannon and Blizzard, so it is a really good uh, max option, right? You get so much residual damage between G-Max Cannonade and even Hail Damage from uh, Max Hailstorm. But even if you don't max Blastoise, Helping Hand and Yawn is really valuable support when combined with Pokemon like Zashi and Calyrex and Zapdos. And what I also really like about Zapdos here is that it's safety goggles with Roost. This gives you so much more endurance and survivability, and it's really valuable considering that Kobo Amoongus and Focus Sash Venusaur are both pretty common. And theoretically, those are both Pokemon that Zapdos should normally beat. But the thing is, with Sash or with Koba, it allows them to take an attack and then put you to sleep. And so with Safety Goggles, you just completely, completely wall these Pokemon that are really common in the format. Finally, to round out the team, you've got AB Rillaboom. This is U-Turn and High Horsepower, so no Woodhammer. Keep that in mind. And then Chukka Berry and Cineroar, really classic set. Um, with Chukka, of course, it helps you a little bit more against Pokemon like Lander's T, as well as Groudon. So, yeah, that is going to be it for the team. Overall, it's just fast-paced offense, uh, but you've got a good amount of bulk on Pokemon like Blastoise, Zapdos, and Zacian as well. And with Focus Sash on Calyrex, you, know, you often can take multiple hits as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and question of the day, kind of just a fun one, I want to know what your favorite song at the moment is in the comment section below. For me, personally, I'm a big electronic fan, and uh, Odessa, who is an electronic artist or group, uh, recently just put out their new single, and I've had that uh, on repeat nonstop, so that's my answer. Um, but yeah, let me know yours in the comment section below, and let's get started. Getting into things here, and we're up against Palkia plus Zacian, Grim, Ensign, Thunderous, and Amoongus. Okay. Hmm. What do I want to max in this game? Blastoise or Zapdos? I've got Goggle Zapdos. So that really helps out against Amoongus. Probably a uh, Blastoise max. Hmm. We've got Play Rough here, which is obviously going to be very helpful into Palkia. I'm mainly worried about Grimstar, I think, because of just its utility. I don't love AV Rillaboom here. Instance Berry is irrelevant in this game. Uh, but it's like, do I bring Zapdos and Blastoise? I could, I really could. Because they both have decent utility even outside of Max, honestly, with Yawn helping hand. I just want to, like, save my Zacian and Calyrex for the late game, ideally. So... It's mainly the Grimstar. If they didn't have Grimstar, I'd probably just lead Calyrex immediately. But because of Grim, I want to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to go Blastoise Zapdos. The idea, basically, is to get rid of Grimstar, and then that paves a path for my restricted Pokemon to not feel threatened. Or as threatened as they would otherwise. So, yeah. We'll see how things play out here. Um, but I think the cool thing with this team is... 
you know, the flexibility and who you may want to max. Blastoise and Zapdos are obviously the main options, but there is a world in which we Dynamax Calyrex Shadow Rider as well. So that's always something to consider. It's Incident Amoongus? Ooh, okay. I'm okay with that. I am very okay with that, actually. So this implies you should have Palkia and Zacian in the back. Intimidate gives you no value here whatsoever. I could just helping hand Max and Airstream. Goggles on Zapdos here in itself is valuable. I definitely don't want to get put to sleep on Blastoise's end here. Okay, I'm down to helping hand, but I think instead of airstreaming, uh, I mean, it could be Koba. It could be either item actually here. Oh, you know what it could have been as well? Okay, instant switches out. That's fine. Into Palkia. That makes sense. I was going to say I could have gone for max lightning to set up terrain, preventing you from sporing me, but uh, I don't think we really need that. I think the tricky thing about Amoongus is Sash, Koba, and Aka are all pretty good items on it. So it could be any of the three. I like all three, honestly. It's very much basically dependent on your team composition. But the thing is, if we actually just get this Helping Hand Airstream off, we're in really good shape, I think. Okay. Let's see if Amoongus helps to protect. Okay, that's fine with me. I'm actually really okay with that because this means now I can just airstream your Amoongus again next turn into Yawn on Palkia. And they were Koba, so they actually may not have needed to go for a Protect there. But the Protect makes sense because you're probably in that position afraid of Fake Out into Max Airstream. You don't want to just, you know, completely get nothing off. But this is now where Blastoise is, uh, has a lot of utility with Yawn. Okay, so now another Airstream should KO. I am down to just Yawn into Palkia, Airstream into Amoongus. We don't really need to go for a Max Lightning at any point, which is also good. If I were my opponent, I'd actually consider switching Amoongus out, because otherwise it's just going to faint. So Amoongus into Instant is a fine play for them, I think. Yeah, they're going to switch it out. Okay, they go into Zacian. That also makes sense. Uh, I could have covered for that with the Max Flare, I think airstreaming here is fine, though, just to ensure that I outspeed the Palkia with... And they're going to max it. Okay, I, I actually think that's really good for us. Because you're not going to KO either of my Pokemon, and I'm going to get a Yawn off into you. So, this is why, like, I wanted to lead... They didn't even uh, bring Grimstar, ultimately, which is interesting. Um, well, I guess they can still have it in the back, right? No, 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 they let in Sinomunga, so they can't have it in the back. Okay, so that's also really valuable for us. Max Guard? Okay. Uh, works for me. Um, we'll get a max airstream off here. I think Flare should KO Zacian right now, so Zapdos is just putting in the work. Yeah. With the speed boost there, and with them committing their Dynamax to Palkia already, I'm really okay just going for... Like, I could airstream and then Hydro Cannon to Zacian, but I'm down to just yawn into Palkia here, and then just Flare into Zacian. Basically, one thing I could have asked myself in this game was whether or not I could have gone for Flare onto Amoongus. The reason I didn't was because I was nervous about them switching Amoongus back out into the uh, Incineroar. So in my head, I was like, well, even if you switch in Zacian, you're still going to take enough damage where a Flare will finish you off. And even if Zacian protects here, Flare into Heat Wave, if the sun is up, should finish you off. Now, maybe they, with Palkia, then instead go for a... Uh, instead of going for Warm when they go for Geyser, right, to change the weather... But then a Thunderbolt should also finish off Zacian from that position. So it's like, if Zacian doesn't protect, great. I just get Flare off against you. But they do protect. These protects are, like, fairly obvious. But at the same time, I don't see any reason to, like, you know, aggressively read into it. Because it's like, if I read into Zacian protecting, it doesn't protect. And then they go for a play rough to just one-shot Blastoise. That's obviously not good for us, right? So that allows us to get the sun up. And more importantly now, I am able to get Yawn off into Palkia. They go for Max Quake. Okay. Into Blastoise. It's not really going to do too much to us. Quake is interesting though. Not all Palkias carry it. You obviously want, want um, you know, Dragon type attack, a Water type attack, and often just like Trick Room and Protect. So, you don't see that every day. 
But now you're gonna fall asleep after this turn. Zacian just took a turn of sleep as well. Or sorry, not a turn of sleep. Uh, took a turn of um, protect. So I'm down for a helping hand here. And with the sun up, I'm down to just heat wave. I think Zacian into uh, instant here would be the right switch, but they don't go for it, which is obviously good for us, as long as we don't miss heat wave here. Okay, brilliant. You connect with the heat wave. Ooh, Zacian survives that. Wow. That's not good. Okay. The thing is, even if they pick up a double knockout here, it's honestly fine, I think, because I've set myself up for success with the late game Calyrex Shadow Rider sweep. So let's see if this KOs us. Okay, Zapdos also hangs on. That's really good. That's really, really good. But that survival does uh, keep my opponent in this, honestly. I think if we just got the knockout there, it should just be over. So pretty bulky Zashi in there. Um, I think I'd rather just go into Calyrex here. If I go into Calyrex, they're just going to switch out their Zashi into Incineroar, right? I've got Roost. If I go into my Zashian, I can just Thunderbolt into play rough. Although I'd probably rather Roost, actually. Mm, I'm going to go into Calyrex here. Mainly because with Calyrex, I can just use Astro Barrage here. And the thing is that Zapdos is really good for me right now. Okay. Pretty impressive bulk from Zashin though. It took a max airstream into a max flare through protect into a heat wave with helping hand support at plus one special defense. So I'm down to just Astro Barrage here and go for Roost. The good thing about Astro Barrage is, you know, like instant on a switch and is still going to take any, you know, slight decent amount to it. Yeah, so they're going to bring instant in, but I have Focus Sash, which is really handy, right? And the Roost here is really important because if I don't Roost, then the Zapdos just faints to a fake out. And I really don't want that to happen. Because the Zapdos outspeeds my opponent's entire team, and it's got Goggles, so it doesn't really have to care about the Amoongus at all. And I can obviously just knock out Sashio from this point on, too. Yeah. So it's like, I could have brought Zashian out, but then if I bring Zashian out, like, I feel compelled to... Like, I have to be a little bit careful, right? Because their Zashian can just get an attack off, and that's pretty scary. Okay. Man, that special defense boost is honestly pretty annoying, though, I have to say. Hmm. You can fake out here. You just go for a dark type attack. I'm honestly down to Roost again here, I think, in Astro Barrage. Okay, they don't go for fake out. But now I've healed Zapdos all the way back to full, so you know, taking all of that damage and then just healing back up is really nice. The scary thing here is if Palkia gets a early wake up. Psyshock should finish it off next turn. And they stay asleep. Okay, that's really good. And it's gonna be throw chop. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I think I'm willing to honestly sacrifice Calyrex here because Psyshock here should get the knockout on Apalkia. So I'm down to just Psyshock and then Thunderbolt into Incineroar. If Palkia goes for a Protect, that actually would even be better for me because then I'd get a free switch in. What I don't want to do, it's like tempting to switch Calyrex out into Zacian because yeah, of course they could just go for another Dark type attack, but then it would be really, really bad for me if they went for a Flare Blitz in that position. I just threw away Zacian. Because at this point, like Calyrex has done his job, which was really just spreading damage around. And this is the nice thing about Psyshock, right? So, with single target, get a KO, get a special attack boost, but I'm probably fainting here. It is just a throw chop. Yep. But that's fine, because the thing is, now you bring out your Zacian. I'm mainly curious if Instant had a berry here. Let's see. Yep. Okay, it did. But the thing is, like, if you bring in Amoongus, well, I've got Goggles. And then I can just go for... Actually, you do bring in Amoongus here. I think you can't bring out... If you bring out Zacian, you actually just lose right now, I think. Well, not necessarily. Because you can bring out Zacian, protect Zacian, and then uh, switch Instant out into Amoongus. And I don't have Sub. Yeah, they bring Amoongus out. Okay. Because I'm Goggles here, I think I'm down to just Protect. And T-Bolt. I think Zapdos just carries me in this game, basically. 
So, yeah, like, instant in this position can't really protect. I mean, maybe it has it, but it's unlikely. I ignore uh, Amoongus' Rage Powders as well. Thunderbolt should be a two-hit knockout onto Incineroar as well. And this Zapdos is untouchable, it's, especially thanks to the speed boost and heat wave. So, yeah, Zapdos, really the MVP of this one, in my opinion. Cool, Amoongus protects even better for us. Maybe it's a parting shot here on a Zapdos, but even if they went for that, I think it's fine, because I just can still click heat wave. And the thing is, my opponent's damage output into Zapdos is increasingly decreasing. <laughs> increasingly decreasing. It's uh, steadily decreasing. They do correctly go for a um, parting shot onto Zapdos, though, so that's a nice play. But the thing is, like, a Heat Wave will still finish off their Zacian. That's at, like, 5%. So this next turn, I can just go for Heat Wave and Behemoth Blade. And because I have safety goggles on Zapdos, I'm feeling quite confident. Like, they're probably thinking, okay, now my play is to protect Zacian and put the Zapdos to sleep, but they can't actually do that. I'm also curious who Zacian is faster here, but either way, Behemoth Blade. The only scary thing here is missing Heat Wave. So I could actually just Thunderbolt instead, and I'm honestly down for that because I'm safety goggles. I just... They're not going to win the game with Amoongus plus uh, Incineroar. So the thing is, in this game, my opponent's gone for Protects in all like the quote-unquote obvious positions, but I don't mind attacking into them because like there's not much that I lose from it, basically. And it's so, like, even if they put my Zacian to sleep, it's like, well, how are you going to beat the Zapdos at this point, right? I'm still just going to Thunderbolt you with confidence. Or we can just one-shot the Amoongus there. Okay, that was a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect that. Although, if anything, I actually would have preferred not to pick up that knockout because this does at least allow them to bring Incin out and then go for a fake out play. Also, I got a paralysis on Incin earlier with Thunderbolt, which is kind of lucky. Didn't talk about that, but I don't. The only thing, the only point in which it would matter is if they get fully paralyzed here. But yeah, given that they just protected, it, it's fine to just Sacred Sword Zacian and Thunderbolt it. No reason to risk a miss here once again with Heat Wave. Your play is to fake out. Oh, they actually just forfeit. Um. I think it was still slightly winnable there. Actually, not really, no. If you fake out Zapdos, crit Behemoth Blade on my Zacian, you're still not beating my Zapdos, especially because I have Roost. So, yeah, the Zapdos set here was amazing, but Blastoise was really important because it basically stopped a really major threat from just sweeping me. Uh, Dynamax Balkia from their end was really, really scary, so being able to put that to sleep thanks to Yong was valuable. And then Helping Hand was really good as well. It's just that we, even with the Helping Hand, that Zacian was bulky enough to take the Max Airstream, Max Flare through Protect, and then Helping Hand Heat Wave, even with the Sun being up. And obviously they had a special defense boost, but still pretty impressive, honestly. So I'm curious how much bulk that Zacian had exactly. Uh, Zapdos without the Life Orbs, its damage output is uh, significantly reduced. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm also a little bit more used to playing with Life Orb, and so those calcs are a little bit more fresh in my head. Uh, and so without it, yeah, we actually didn't pick up the KO, but... What I really liked about this is the Blastoise Zapdos lead, because like those are both Pokemon that really want to Dynamax, but their sets are designed in a way where you get so much value, even if not, uh, like you don't Dynamax one of them. So it's great, whereas like you think about a Pokemon like Thunderous, for example, where like you bring it out and it just has like, it feels like not very much value if it doesn't Dynamax, but with this lead, we have the flexibility of Dynamaxing either early on, and my goal was to eliminate like Grimmsnarl early on to then pave the way for Zashi and Calyrex. They ultimately didn't bring it, but we had a lot of good offense here uh, between the Blastoise and Zapdos, and even even if we weren't picking up one hit KOs, uh, it was enough to just add up the damage for the late game. So yeah, fun first game and let's keep things going. Next game of the day here, and that is a Darmanitan. Whoa, Tornado Xerneas Kyogre Raichu Karkana. This is awesome. Definitely one of the coolest teams we've run into so far in Series 12. Feels like a 2019 team with Tornado's Karkana, Xerneas Kyogre. Hmm. Raichu's obviously a big problem for Zapdos here. I don't think I want to bring in Sin. Uh, this, this one's really tricky. Especially thanks to Cortana. Like, I almost feel compelled to... Uh, Tornado's Cortana's scary. Could go Calyrex. They don't have a Ghost Resist, which I think we can take advantage of. And Calyrex can burn Cortana as well, so I'm thinking Calyrex plus Blastoise. Zacian. I really would want to bring Zapdos. My problem is the Raichu on their end. So I'm going to give Rillaboom a shot here. Incin, like, you could bring just to help against Cartano, but I think because I have Will-O-Wisp and Focus Sash, it's a little bit more manageable. Um, This is a really cool team, though, so props to my opponent. Win or lose, like, they're using a lot of unconventional sets. And, yeah, it's funny because Xerneas Ogre was really... 
Uh, pretty strong combination in previous VGC formats, but not so much this one. Tornadus plus Thernius. Okay, that works for me, honestly. Um, turn one is pretty interesting, though. If you're my opponent, do you go for a Protect into Tailwind? I'm going to Astro Barrage here. But Blastoise, it's like... I can just max and just go for Cannonade. The alternative would be going for a Yawn, but I have Zacian and Rillaboom in the back. It feels like the best max option in this game really is to just, you know, max Blastoise. My problem is I think it'll be Cartana coming in after it, we eliminate Xerneas. So it's like... Tailwind Geomancy here, right? Could be a possibility. So then, like, Yawn is the other interesting option here with Blastoise rather than maxing it immediately. But honestly, I'm down for just Astro Barrage and a Cannonade. What do I expect from their end if they're leading this Tailwind Geomancy turn one, I think? The reason I didn't uh, ended up not going for Yawn was because I was nervous about a Taunt onto Blastoise. If you taunt me... Well, then I guess I get Astro Barrage off pre-Geomancy, so it's not even that bad. But I like the idea of getting Cannonade up and early right now, since like if they have Kyogre in the back, I get no value with Cannonade against that. Yeah, they just go for Tailwind. Okay. Geomancy, Moonblast, Gleam. Okay. Uh, let's see how much Astro Barrage into Cannonade does. I would think well over 50% between those two attacks and the Residual. The problem is stalling out Tailwind right now because, like, the, the main question is basically, do they have Cart do they have Cartana in the back? Like, I expect Cartana plus Kyogre. I think that's just the strongest way to play this game for them. I could have opted for Psy Shock there instead. Okay, not bad damage, not bad at all. We will get the Cannonade off here. Yeah, it's going to be just over 50% from the attacks themselves. And now we get Cannonade ticking as well, which is good. So that puts Xerneas on a timer. I don't think either Pokemon's going to Dynamax here, so I'm fine protecting. I mean, I could just protect and Cannonade, right? And just eliminate Xerneas here. I think that works for me, honestly. Protect. Don't want to Hailstorm because I don't want to break my own Focus Sash. The thing, like, Hailstorm is also really valuable. Oh my gosh, what? They're actually going to max. Oh, wow. I have to say I did not see that coming at all. Um, huh. That's the other interesting thing. If I click Yawn turn 1, you can just max and Starfall turn 2 to prevent yourself from falling asleep. So now I feel a little bit better about not yawning. <laughs> Interesting, though. I did not see that coming. Hmm. Okay, they taunt in a Calyrex. I would guess Starfall and a Blastoise. But do you even KO at plus two? Let's see. You don't. Okay. I'll take it. I mean, I, I feel like if you're maxing there, then do you not have Cortana in the back? It does allow you to survive for another turn, right? But the thing is, I honestly don't mind, because I don't think, like... Oh, that's a crit. That's a really lucky crit, honestly. I mean, like, they should have survived for one more turn with Xerneas, but that just makes the game so hard. But that's the risk of maxing, right, in a position like that. Like, I would only do that if you were 100% confident you would knock out Blastoise, but I didn't think we'd ever faint there, to be honest. Blastoise is just pretty tanky Pokemon in this format. And that highlights one of the reasons why Xerneas maybe isn't as strong um, in this metagame, unfortunately. Okay, so they bring Kyogre out. I have Focus Sash on Calyrex. How many turns of Tailwind do they have left? Two turns. Two turns of Cannonade as well. I've got Rillaboom in the back, which is obviously really good. So let's think this through. What is my opponent's last Pokemon going to be? Uh, Kartana, Raichu, or... Darmanitan. Rillaboom gives me a fake out and a glide into Kyogre next turn. I should probably conserve Zacian. It's just it's Zacian. <laughs> um Okay. 
I'm down to Astral Barrage, and I actually am down to Hailstorm in this position because I like the idea of more residual damage on whatever the final Pokemon's gonna be. Uh, Water Spout gets. The, actually, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised that it KO'd Blastoise there, right? Maybe Max Guardian was actually better there. Um. Yeah, why did I in my head think I could survive with both Pokemon? That was kind of a bad assumption. Okay, it's the last turn of Tailwind for them. Did they faint from this? I don't think so. But I've, I've, uh, I'm Assault Vested here, so... Because we're AV... It's the last turn of Tailwind. I should survive a Hurricane from Tornadus, and they should faint from Cannonade Residual. Uh, I could also just fake out Torn here. I just don't know the item on Kyogre, and that's what makes me a little bit scared, right? Like, let, what if it was actually Choice Specs? Zacian is really bulky here. Hmm. Last turn of Tailwind and Cannonade. I think because I'm AV here, I want to fake out into Kyogre and play rough it. If Kyogre protects here, it's fine. And they don't protect, which I think is a really good sign for us one way or another. Oh, actually, because they outsped Tornadus, I should have known they were Scarfed, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be Slow Tornadus, theoretically. Uh, they do get a confusion, but we don't miss play rough, so I think that should KO. And actually, even if we didn't KO, if you're locked in a Water Spout, that's not bad for us either. The only problem now is, yeah, I'm confused. But Tornadus also faints from Candidate, which is great. We did get lucky in this game, though, right? Like, if we don't crit the um, Xerneas, then it gets a, another Star Fall off. But I don't, like, I think the Xerneas faints after the second turn, for sure. Like, it doesn't get more than two, two max moves off. They had Cortana in the back, so honestly, I think it was better off for my opponent to just, like... Sack Xerneas and then play towards a Dynamax Cartana because I had nothing for Max Cartana in this matchup, but they may have been worried that I had like Zapdos in the back, so I can definitely understand that. And like I mentioned, I did get fairly lucky in this game with that crit as well. Um, I'm fine to just go for Glide to break a Sash here and then just Sacred Sword on a Cartana. Cartana's not very good against Ashian if you're not Dynamaxed, so yeah. It was just an ambitious Xerneas max there, especially because you knew Cannonade was ticking as well. So I, I think in this game, it's like an example where like it actually might be worth it to sacrifice your Xerneas for two turns of my Dynamax ultimately on Blastoise and then just play towards sweeping with Cartana. So his Leaf Blade protects, Smart Strike, Sacred Sword, Mentor, Tornadus. That makes sense. That's really out valuable against Whimsicon. This is actually interesting. Yeah, they, they are... Um, were they Scarf Kyogre? <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> So, yeah, this is why, like, you shouldn't just immediately assume an item. I was just saying how, like, it should... I thought it should be Scarf because it outsped, but no, they're modest, modest Mystic Water, and then Tornadus actually is even slower, which I think is really interesting. This is modest, but max speed on Zern. Air Balloon Raichu. Speed Swap, that's really cool. I don't think I've actually seen that in so long. Cortana, and then Scarf Darmanitan. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I, I think like my opponent was probably nervous about maxing um, Cartana because they may have feared Zapdos in the back. But I think a max Cartana would have just absolutely wrecked me in this game, especially because I'd already committed my Dynamax to Blastoise. And then so it's like, what can I really do against you, especially after you get Tailwind up as well. So yeah, uh, I was surprised by the Xerneas max. I was you know happy to see it, but I think this would have been a lot tougher if they had actually just like, you know, gone for Boom Blaster Gleam sacrifice your Xerneas, but then it's like, then you've gotten Tailwind up, you've gotten two turns of my Dynamax out of the way, and you've forced me to Dynamax a Pokemon that's really weak to something that you uh, have, which is Cartana. And then Cartana is a Pokemon that can snowball really quickly thanks to Beast Boost and Max Airstream as well. So yeah, worked out for us, but this is the one in which like, I think, I don't know how I would have approached it. Um, I gotta think about it a little bit more. Like I wouldn't, I don't know how I would have approached it if they indeed just uh, sack Xerneas and then Max Cartana. Would have been maybe bringing Ensign or Zapdos then in the back. It would be uh, maybe a Pokemon adjustment. But yeah, either way though, happy to show off just how good the Blastoise and Zapdos on this team can be. So let's look for another one. Next one of the day, and we finally run into ho -Oh. I've been wondering when I'd uh, see this Pokemon. And here we go. ho -Oh, Zashin, Miensho, Ensign, Aleki, Giastrodon. Okay. Um, Gastro is very bad news for our Blastoise here. 
Honestly, I think Cole is pretty good here. My best damage is either going to be Cannonade from Blastoise or Zapdos. Ugh. And obviously because they have Gastro, I'm a lot less willing to bring Blastoise. I wouldn't be surprised if they even just straight up drop Gastrodon, it, making the assumption I don't bring Blastoise. Which would not be a bad assumption, honestly. Aleki ho is a scary lead. <sighs> I don't love this at all. I just don't really know who to drop, or I guess, like, I don't feel like I have enough good offense here in one way or another. Maybe I still bring Blastoise, because Hydro Cannon is still decent offense. You know what? I'm down to run it back with the Zapdos Blastoise lead that we went with previously because it just leaves really flexible options on turn one of the battle. Because I can max either potentially, and a uh, helping hand into a Zapdos move is really good. The problem here is that Ho-Oh is just an absolute nightmare to go up against. Um, so Blastoise and Zapdos would be valuable. Like Ho-Oh crushes my uh, restricted mons here in this matchup. Lucky plus Ho. -Oh. Okay. Got Wakamberry here on Blastoise. I just really don't want to Dynamax Zapdos yet because there might be Eerie Impulse from this. You could pivot Ho out into Gastrodon. A lot of things that can go wrong for us here. So, on turn one of this game, I'm intrigued by Heat Waving just to break a Sash potentially on Aleki and going for Yawn. I just, I really don't want to Dynamax here yet. They are going to commit to Dynamax of their own though, okay. That could be good, that could be bad. Lucky Max makes sense to me. Wow. That actually might be the best case scenario because like I may actually be able to put my opponent's restricted Dynamax to sleep. But maybe Boss Wish just faints and it gets doubled up into. I feel like that's probably what's happening here. Okay, so they're just playing very aggressively on turn one. I honestly think that's a great idea, because ho is normally such like a... Well, I wouldn't say such a passive Pokemon, but it is relatively passive in the grand scheme of things. Slight for Balaki. Does that KO my Blastoise? Oh, that's a nightmare. Well done. <laughs> I actually don't even know if I can come back from this. What is the item on the Ho-Oh Life Orb? No, you're not even Life Orb. Well... Well, it's gotta be Max Calyrex, but... Oh, man. Ho-Oh Aleki is just such a strong duo against me here. I'm really impressed by it, because it feels like... It's it's the Gastron on the back as well, right? Because if they didn't have Gastron, I would probably have Max Blastoise turn one. But just having it in team preview makes me so much more cautious. But because it's not a good matchup, I might just had to have had to have made some big plays, right? Oh man. Um I just I don't really even know what we can do. That was just such a good turn one for my opponent. What, okay, it, given the lead that I had, what could I have done better? Assuming that we don't know the Lecky's life orb there. I guess it's helping hand max lightning immediately into Ho-Oh. There's just, like, there's so much that could go wrong there. If they just go into Gastron, it's an absolutely terrible turn for me. But things are not looking too hot right now. <laughs> like, I still have a Zacian to deal with in the back as well. This is just... Wow. I don't really see a good way to win this, honestly. I'm going for Heatwave Protect with the idea, like, maybe I can pull off a sweep with Max Calyrex, but this duo is just... I have so little counterplay, too. 
And honestly, like, I don't even think this Protect accomplishes anything, because for my opponent's shoes, like, Zapdos is the bigger threat, so you should just target Zapdos instead with the Flare rather than a Zacian. They do Airstream. Uh, into Zapdos. I mean, I could have maxed the Zapdos, but, like, I was such low HP already. Like, I was already at 50%, or just over 50% starting the turn. So I didn't love that idea. Yeah, this is just brutal. This is really cool for my opponent. I think part of it is because in the other restricted formats, like, I wouldn't see Ho actually Dynamax too frequently, but this was the perfect matchup for it to max. I, I'm, like, trying to think how I could have even done better in this game. Rillaboom is an uh, absolute non-factor. And the problem is Aleki with Electroweb spam. So it could be instant, because I at least pressure Fake Out onto Aleki on turn 1. Something like instant Zapdos, instant Blastoise, but my restricted Pokemon just actually feel useless right now. That's what feels particularly bad. Okay, I'm going to max. I shall... Suppose Phantasm. And go for another Protect. I think this match, though, really highlights how valuable ho -Oh can be, because Zashin just can't touch it at all unless you have Wild Charge. Right? And it's not just ho -Oh that's the problem, it's ho -Oh plus the Aleki, because I've got nothing to outspeed the Regi Aleki. And the thing is, on turn one, like, you know, Eerie Impulse can be a move that you run on Aleki as well. So, this was just one in which I got absolutely wrecked. And I didn't, like, the... I don't even have, like, significantly better counterplay. But I, I love this, right? Because it highlights, like, hey, here's a restricted Pokemon that not that many people are using, but I, like, am using a restricted duel that's a little bit more meta-standard, and I got absolutely crushed here. So it highlights how in this format there is so much room for exploration for, you know, other restricted Pokemon that aren't just Kyogre, Groudon, Evil Tal, Zashi, and Calyrex. Like, I barely scratched my opponent in this one. I think I just can't play turn one safe in this game. Like, there's... I mean, it's not like I did even. I went for the yawn. Uh, I could have maxed Blastoise. Like, could you imagine if I maxed Blastoise and just cannonated the Lecky? That could have been good. I guess I just didn't realize how aggressively I needed to play turn one of this game. And it was actually basically over after turn one. I feel like there was very little I could have done. And the other reason is because not only... Um, you know, is Ho already really strong, but they're also decreasing my speed with Electroweb from Regieleki, and Ho is increasing its speed via Max Airstream as well. So it's like, I'm Dynamax now, but they have Zacian, and th this is just why Zacian is such a good Pokemon, right? Like, if my opponent didn't have Zacian, theoretically, with our Dynamax, we could p uh, pull off a comeback right now. But because they've conserved their Zacian, well, I'm just gonna get one shot here anyway, most likely. So, yeah. I think the, the uh, adjustment I'd make is leading Instant plus Zapdos or Instant plus Blastoise. And even with that, I don't feel super good because you can just double protect on turn one to bypass the fake out. And then after that, it's like, okay, where do we really go from there? But honestly, I am really happy to get wrecked against Ho-Oh because this is a Pokemon that I like feel like I've seen very little usage of so far. But ho -Oh in itself is really good against Zacian. And... The interesting thing here is I even have things that threaten Ho, and I led with them, Zapdos and Blastoise. But both are pretty scary because the Gasheron actually gives both really, really um, a really tough time because I can't confidently go for water type attacks with Blastoise with the uh, Gasheron switch in uh, as a potential for them. And I also can't really comfortably go for Max Lightning. Let's say I Dynamax Zapdos in trouble and I do indeed switch Ho into Gasheron. Then I waste a turn of my Dynamax completely, and then the second turn you can just protect a stall another turn of my Dynamax, and then things are also really bad there. So this is such an interesting game because they didn't even bring Gasheron out. I don't even know what their fourth Pokemon was, but just the presence of it in team preview put in a ton of work and made me play in a completely different manner. So yeah. Really, really cool to go up against a unique Ho-Oh team, and I'm hoping that's a Pokemon we see more of. Like, that's opened my eyes to how good this Pokemon can potentially be, uh, especially when you have the right support with Gastron. A Life Orb Aleki was honestly also really brutal, because you just dropped my speed while also doing pretty significant damage. So, yeah. 
that's going to be it for this one, though. Really fun set of games, and this team has a lot of cool tricks as well, and we played against some really interesting teams as well. So thank you so much, as always, for watching. Thank you to Yoshi and Lugia for the team once again. Check her out linked in the description below. Thank you to you all, as always, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.